welcome everyone to the 13th annual Spirit of Unity uh, session from Holistic Peace Institute, sponsored by Harold Schnitzer. This is the uh, Student Peace Education and Leadership Virtual Summit. And we, in today's uh, session, we are honoring um, President F.W. Duclerc, who is uh, co-won the Nobel Peace Prize with Nelson Mandela. Today, we were honoring eight schools that um, won the Spirit of Unity when for the 13th year. We wanted to start first with uh, a honorable mention of some of the schools that um, are not present with us today. There are three of them. One is the Portland Opportunities and Industrialization Center uh, associated with Rosemary Anderson High School um, for their work in innovative ways to let children um, and students thrive. And the other honorable mention is to Catlin Gable School uh, who have shown um, that they bring in the values of kindness into their school programs. And we'll start today's session with a video from Portland Jewish Academy, who also is not present at today's meeting. However, they applied and their, the, the program that they um, won the spirit of unity for is in the um, video that we'll present. Also present is Dr. Carmen Williams, principal of Fabian K-8 School, um, Kate Shively from Baker Perry Middle School, Helen Thurlow from Resurrection Parish, Dr. Marisol Rodriguez from McDaniel High School, Tony Crawford from Liverpool International School in Cairo, Egypt. And we will also have a commendation uh, from Congressman Schrader and a keynote from Gary Allen Spanovich on our um, honored um, Nobel Peace Laureate, Frederick de Clare, who recently, uh, recently passed away, but was hosted here by the Holistic Peace Institute in 2012. I'd like to play a, a, a little video for you all to get us kicked off here. Hi, my name is Hannah and I'm a seventh grader at Portland Jewish Academy. PJA is a case school located in Southwest Portland. We are honored to be one of the recipients of the Harold Schnitzer Spirit of Unity Award. We wish we could be with you all today but special school programming this week has prevented us from joining you. Instead, some of my classmates have prepared a short video highlighting our school's commitment to community service, the project we have selected that is a part of our middle school's effort to address food insecurity while promoting empathy and understanding, and our gratitude to the Holistic Peace Institution for being such strong supporters of our work. My name is Mai. As Hannah mentioned, Portland Jewish Academy is committed to serving our community. We do this in many ways, such as running monthly donation drives, benefiting local nonprofits, participating in volunteer opportunities, and learning about the needs in our community, and developing programs and projects that address these needs. Our school's motto is think for yourself, work for the world. And we try hard to make independent thought and responsibility to others the focus of our time the classroom and our community at large. All four of us um, participating in this video were part of fall elective called Work for the World, where we spent, clo where we spent close to two hours each week um, doing special projects, such as packing lunch bags for the guests, serving by Blanche Che House, make making baby blankets for Project Linus, building furniture for Community Warehouse, Sewing children's masks for Portland Homeless Family Solutions and making gratitude gifts for our teachers and staff. Hi, my name is Madeline and I'm excited to tell you about an upcoming service learning project that will involve all 77 students in our middle school. 
Later this spring, we'll be, we will be assembling meal sacks for Portland Backpack. Portland Backpack's mission is to provide children at risk of hunger with food sacks for the weekend days when food scarcity may be high. Ten elementary schools in Portland partner with Portland Backpack, Backpack with 1,000 children receiving meal sacks or grocery gift cards each week. Each meal sack contains two packets of instant oatmeal, two proteins such as canned soup, chili, stew, ravioli, or a box of macaroni and cheese, a can of fruit packed in its own juice, and two snacks such as nuts, granola bars, boxes of raisins, or breakfast bars. Each bag also contains a handmade card of encouragement made, made by someone in the community who cares that they have enough to get through the weekend. Hi, my name is Sharika. I work for the World Exploratory Class, as well as our entire school. I'm grateful to the Holistic Peace Institute for recognizing the ability of young people to make a difference in our community. The honor to use the life from the Harold Schnitzer Spirit of Unity Award, which is fulfilled to fulfill between 100 and 150 meals. While we recognize that this is a fraction of the meals that Portland Backpack provides to children each week, we know that involving your entire middle school in this meal shop assembly effort will have a ripple effect beyond the day we do our project. When our students look for future opportunities to address food insecurity, they will think of Portland Backpack and how easy and gratifying it was to pack meal sacks. At Portland Jewish Academy, we believe addressing the needs in our community guided by our school values, which include respect and responsibility, are the essence of building a more peaceful world. Thank you, Portland J Jewish Academy. Unfortunately, they were not able to be with us this uh, today because um, they uh, were preparing for um, emergency situation within their school. So they, they, they've taken the whole week uh, to do a training with their staff and uh, they are, they're not holding school. And I think it's really remarkable how each school has weathered this situation with the COVID and that each one school has been innovative and each leader of the school have taken their time to do what they thought best, you know, under great restrictions. And I just have to herald everybody for even showing up today and actually for being involved as educators. I'd like to introduce uh, Carmen uh, Williams uh, from Fabian School. And this is the excerpt from the certificate that Fabian School uh, received. They use, received the certificate of the spirit of unity for using innovative community-based models, creating a place where students and communities thrive through leadership, courage, inclusiveness, and faith. So with that, uh, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Carmen Williams. Morning. So I'm Carmen Williams, students call me Dr. Williams, and um, I come to you from Northeast Portland. And I guess Fabian is innovative in that we seek to create a school that's based off of a few questions. Um, one is how do we do school differently? Um, how do we welcome community into the school? As in, how, do they, how does school become more democratized? And um, how can schools address issues of equity outside of just an academic lens? And so often ac academic work um, is where equity is housed and in professional development, but really the facility itself can also bring equity um, to our community. And then Nancy, if you don't mind, go to the next slide. So these are just a few snapshots um, of what I'm speaking about. So. We have students working in STEM projects. We're a STEAM-focused school. We have a small snapshot of our facility. Um, we have a, a wellness clinic that responds to the dental and physical medical needs of our community. We have a pantry that is privately funded and is um, no criteria. All families can access this 
um, free food support. We have a diaper program. We have a robust early childhood program. We have, um, you'll see a picture here of a native Montessori preschool classroom. So this is a preschool classroom that responds to our um, native families needs. And then we also have, you'll see um, a picture of a seventh grader working with some, some littler students. And this is actually a picture from last week. Um, we run a buddy program where we bring learning and partnership and community full circle. And what we seek to do at Fabian is really create the school as the hub of the community, not just families coming in when they're invited, um, but, but families using the school as a resource. And the school can be more than just an academic space. The, the school truly can serve the community. And one way we do that is make sure that we are responsive um, as in being true to what cultural responsiveness is supposed to be, is we do a needs and asset assessment of our community. We see where can we, what can we leverage that's fabulous about our community and bring it into the school. And then what are their needs? What are the things that the school can provide to fill holes um, that might not be within our boundary or, or within you know, local reach? And we do that through um, a community school director and he heads that work. And then as a school, we decide, what resources, what partnerships, what networking do we need to do to fill those gaps? And then as far as partnerships go, we have about 35 partners at the moment and growing. Many of our partners are around um, social service type partners, wellness, uh, mental health. Trillium is a very strong partner of us um, providing mental health services. We're working with OHSU right now to make a robust uh, medical um, component to our school. And then we have a lot of STEAM partners. And when we say STEAM, people frequently think science, but it's also arts, right? So a very robust arts program, a robust technology program, science, mathematics. And the aim for the STEAM programming is to provide opportunity to students. Because what I want from at Fabian is when students leave our school, they have reached their highest potential, whether academic or social emotionally, and they have opportunities, they have choice. And that's what I'm aiming for. When an eighth grader enrolls in high school, they have choice because we were able to meet their needs along the way and support their families through their pre-K through eighth grade um, path. So just a little bit about us. And I really do appreciate the award. Thank you so much for the recognition and the support. And uh, we have more exciting things to come. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Carmen. Uh, and what's really thrilling is to hear how much is integrated, so much peacemaking is integrated in the model that your school portrays and that with your leadership. Thank you so much. Um, like to next introduce a, a, a Baker Prairie Middle School, which uh, I believe is sixth through eighth grade. Um, and Kate can correct me if that's not. Or seven and eight. Seven and eight. Mm -hmm. So seven and eight, the dynamic. Uh, time uh, when uh, students gain their voice and uh, their certificate read the honored Baker Prairie Middle School for Student Advocating for Equality Club and recognition of focus that each student matters and they can make a difference one action at a time. So I'll turn it over to you, Kate. And I, I have the program, or are you going to run it yourself? If you would like, I can share my screen and I can run it. Okay. Um, and while I get that going, there's an echo and it's, I know it's going to distract me while I'm talking um, and we have our students presenting too. So while I get my presentation going, if everyone who's not talking could mute, maybe we won't have that echo. Yeah, that's a good idea. And do I need to stop sharing? I think I do. Or I, I have it set for multiple screens, but let's just make sure that yours fills the screen. Like, okay. So I've started sharing. Are you seeing the Baker Prairie Middle School presentation? Okay, I see a nod. Um, okay, well, we'll get started. Um, so yeah, I am Kate Shively. I'm one of our staff sponsors for the Safe Club. So there are two of us this year, which is really exciting. Um, I do use she, her pronouns. And we would like to start off by thanking the Holistic Peace Institute for um, providing this opportunity and honoring us with the Spirit of Unity Award again this year. And I'm really excited to have our student speakers introduce themselves and talk more about what has been happening at Baker Prairie in the last year and a half. So I'm gonna turn it over to Toby. 
Hi, my name is Toby Brown. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm an eighth grader at Baker Prairie Middle School in Canby. My name is Jasper Carpenter. I also use he, him pronouns, and I'm also an eighth grader at Baker Prairie Middle School in Canby. We're honored to represent Safe Club and are excited to share a little bit more about who we are and what we do. Safe Club began briefly in February of 2020 after a student requested a club where they could feel supported. Safe Club met for one month before schools shut down due to COVID. While they didn't meet for the rest of the years as schools adjusted to virtual learning, Safe Club started back up in 2020 to 2021 school year and met virtually. This year, we are able to meet in person twice a month since we are fully back to in-person learning. Safe Club stands for Students Advocating for Equality, the focus on advocacy, education, and community with a specific focus on the LGBTQ plus community. According to a study by, done by Gleason, 90% of LGBTQ plus students hear anti-LGBTQ comments in school. I myself have as well. 84% um, of LGBTQ youth report verbal harassment at school because of their gender identity and or sexual orientation. 28% of LGBTQ youth drop out of school due to harassment based on their gender identity, identity and or expression. According to another study done by the Human Rights Campaign, LGBTQ youth are more than twice as likely to feel suicidal and over four times as likely to attempt suicide compared to heterosexual youth. In the words of activist Stuart Milk, we are less when we don't include everyone. We have accomplished a lot as a club in spite of the pandemic and its challenges. As we mentioned before, we are able to meet at least twice a, twice a month in person this year. During that time, we learn more about the LGBTQ plus community and its history, learn more from each other and focus on how we can educate the border the broader community to create, to create a more inclusive school environment. Last year, we were able to collaborate with Baker Prairie's leadership school to sponsor Pride Week. Since we were able, since we were, since we were in a cohort, cohort model, we sponsored two spirit days, one focused on LGBTQ plus community and allyship and the other one taking pride in our hobbies. We also sponsored the Transgender Day Aware Remembrance in November of 2021 with a candlelight vigil display and educational posters. Looking forward, there are more things we hope to accomplish. Safe Club students are currently surveyed about their names and pronouns and our staff sponsors are working with the border staff to get to know their students in line with ODE guidelines. Many staff members already asked their students for their chosen name and pronouns. As other student groups start meeting again, we look forward to working with them to sponsor more events and fundraisers to raise awareness and create more and create a more collaborative and inclusive school environment. Safe Club students have begun a poster campaign to increase visibility and awareness of the LGBTQ plus community and its history. To continue the practice of including marginalized groups, we will continue to sponsor Pride Pride Spirit Days again this spring. We will highlight the LGBTQ plus community and allies along, along with highlighting all of the unique traits of our student body. In addition to Safe Club, Baker Prairie has continued to implement the Character Strong Advisory Curriculum, providing SEL to all students through virtual and hybrid learning to now. Fitness Club also came out of the pandemic and continues to operate, inviting students of all athletic abilities and interests to participate. Social and other groups were also offered virtually during distance and hybrid learning, giving students opportunities to learn new skills and just hang out with each other. We'd like to say thank you to Mrs. Turner, our principal, and our staff sponsors. We'd especially like to once again say thank you to the Holistic Peace Institute for the, for the Spirit of Unity Award. This is the time when we feel like we should applaud and here we are with me, you know, forgetting to turn my mic back on. But honestly, um, when we've done these assemblies um, and I feel that energy now just building with the first, you know, and, and all of our discussions, I really wanna just um, 
keep flowing on. It's so wonderful to hear the students. And thank you. Our, our next uh, speaker is Her Helen Thurlow, who's the director of the youth programs of Resurrection Paris Youth Programs. And she, their programs were awarded this year for developing and nurturing habits that embrace inner peace and universal peace. And I wanted to just turn it over to Helen to have her just tell some of the um, avenues that they're working on this year. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Gary, um, and the Holistic Peace Institute for this wonderful opportunity. Um, yeah, so uh, when I first started um, as the youth minister and young adult minister at Resurrection, um, I was going into, um, into the already second year of the pandemic. And, and so it was very interesting to see how the youth are, were responding in regards to both home life, school life, and at church, the church life. And what I realized was how the pandemic impacted the, the mental health, um, as well as um, the mental wellness of each student and their families. Um, so on May, um, October 10th, um, just happened to fall onto a Sunday. And um, it also happened to be a, um, the Mental Health World Day. And so we did a project on where we were talking about loyalty and perseverance in regards to um, passages in scripture. And we um, decided to do a little project where we took a piece of paper and we wrote um, things that maybe people might have said to us that was cruel um, or mean. And we wrote them all down and any words or any phrases, um, you know, like you're dumb or you're too fat or too ugly or whatever, something that was really hurtful. And we didn't put our names on it. And even the adults, I have included the adults and we put them in a piece in a box. We sealed that box and we went over to the dumpster um, near the parish. And we said, this is no longer you. Whatever is inside here is no longer you. I want you to go ahead and start thinking outside the box. And I threw the box away. Um, and then we went on a little peace walk um, just to kind of reflect on, on that. And we just haven't looked back. Um, in November, November 11th was um, Veterans Day. And still with the theme of mental health, we did the 2.2 walk, um, mile walk here in Forest Park um, to represent the veterans who are suffering from PTSD. Because uh, statistically, 22 veterans a day take their own lives um, due to the demons that they are dealing with. Um, and that's 22 members of our society who served our country. That's just too much. Um, so we did that. And then currently right now um, in May, we are partnering with NAMI, the National Alliance with Mental Illness, their Multnomah County chapter. And we're gonna be doing a peace walk on May 22nd, um, parish wide. So this not only includes our youth and young adults, but our entire parish will be doing this. May 22nd is also the day of hope. And the gospel readings for, for that Sunday um, actually reflect um, hope. So it's kind of nice that it coincides um, with our gospel readings. And um, we're going to be doing that in the entire month of May. We'll have guest speakers. Um, one of them is Sister Michael Francine, who is a sister of the Saint, Sisters of St. Mary. She's also a licensed professional counselor, and she'll be talking about um, mental health and mental health awareness in regards to the family unit. Um, so that's, that's it. And again, I really appreciate um, the opportunity and um, this, this special award that was given to our parish and our youth. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. And we applaud you as well for being such a, just bringing people together during the COVID, giving them an alternative kind of social structure where they can really do things good for society. 
Um, moving right along, I want to introduce um, uh, Marisol Rodriguez, uh, a longtime teacher at McDaniel High School, and her uh, class project, A Peace with Myself and with Others. Well, in the meantime, I want to say, buenos dias, me llamo Marisol Rodriguez. Y soy la maestra de español en la escuela secundaria McDaniel aquí en Portland, Oregon. Now let's start in English. Let's, shall we? Okay. So I want to say welcome. I'm so excited to be here in this summit with all of you. I hope you have a great morning. I see lovely students in my screen. Hello. And uh, I, let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Rodriguez de Lord. I am one of the Spanish teachers at McDaniel High School. Uh, located here in Portland, Oregon. Uh, but before I continue with our presentation, I want to take a moment to acknowledge and to say thank you very much uh, in name of McDaniel High School who received the award to Portland State University and myself to Nancy and Gary Spanovich for their perseverance, their wisdom, labor of law for peace and education, especially during this time. So thank you very much. So. Now, probably some of you wondering, what is McDaniel? What is McDaniel? Because uh, people go, I never hear that uh, name of school, even as I live in Portland. Well, <laughs> let me tell you a little bit about who we are. Uh, McDaniel High School used to be Madison High School, and it's a comprehensive Portland public school, and it's located in uh, the 82nd Avenue between Mount Tabor and, and your way to go into the airport. So I invite you one of these days when you drive by the 82nd, you can look at our new, brand new, beautiful building. They have an awesome view of Mount Hood. But what is the most important about McDaniel High School besides the new building that we have and the amazing view is actually the student body. In our school, we have students that are very diverse. They, they have multinationalities. And I can give you an example. We have a student from South Africa, Sierra Leone, Afghanistan, uh, Somalia, Ethiopia. We have from China, uh, Tibet, uh, Laos, Vietnam, Chile, Peru, Guatemala, Republica Dominican. We have from Cuba, we have from the Scandinavian countries, we have from France, we have from Spain, we have from Italy. So we have all these students. Besides that, we have students who they transfer in from other states, like from California, Arizona, San Diego, Washington, New York, and also internally other students moving from like Salem, Oregon, or Centennial uh, High School, or uh, Franklin High School. And also we have uh, students who they were in home school. And so, as you can see, it's a component of so many uh, variation, a multinationality and diverse population of students. To give you an idea is we, uh, so far we have more than 34 languages spoken in our uh, school community. Right, 34, 34 and more languages spoken. So it's very uh, diverse, what is very rich in that regard. And also they give us the opportunity as a, um, educators to witness how these students with different background, different nationalities can interact, building exchange ideas, building conversation, building friendships, despite the skin color. So it's a really beautiful uh, place. And like I say, it's work like almost like a micro UN nations. So I invite you to come to visit us and reach out. And now let's talk about the award. And so this group uh, is one of the programs that we have in uh, McDaniel High School. Under the direction of our current principal, Senor Adam Skiles, McDaniel has developed a very powerful uh, and many innovative uh, programs to offer our students many choices because we have diverse population with diverse interests. And one of these programs is this challenge program. The challenge program is a partnership program between McDaniel High School and Portland State University. What does it mean is students who 
taking a Spanish in this program, earning college credits for high school, but at the same time earning college credits. So they have dual credits. So Portland states are awarded with 12 college credits. They can take it if they continue in Portland State or they can take it to other university. So it's one, one of the so many great programs that we're offering in our school. Now let's talk about the, um, the, the project, the peace project. So, and sometimes people will ask why a Spanish class language had to do so much with peace? How do how you connect that? Well, it's very direct because language, language is a culture. Language help us to share, communicate our values, our ideas, our beliefs, our love, our fears. So uh, we believe that actually peace should be the main, the heart of each language. As well, peace should be in all of our hearts in the humanity. So to nurture that habit, we have developed this project that in Spanish we say paz, mean peace, and conmigo mismo, means with myself and with los demás, the others. So the title is Paz Conmigo Mismo y con los demás. And I'm very honored, I'm very excited to introduce to you the, the most important members of our community in the, in the school communities, our students. And I'm very lucky to have Senorita Eva McKee Cruiser here, who she will be presenting a little more and will be sharing her ideas about peace and also a video who will be paired for you. So Eva. Hello, um, I would just once again like to thank the Peace Institute on behalf of my class and on behalf of my school for the award and for inviting us to speak here today. And um, a few things, I think, you know, everyone deserves to have a peaceful environment to live in and in creating that environment, just one person makes all the difference. And seeing so many people here that I'm sure are doing their part in that just by being here, um, it's nice to see and it's reassuring and it's encouraging. So with that, we have our video. Hola, yo me llamo Al. My pronouns are they, them. Um, if you're missing tranquility in your life, feel free to ask those you love for advice. Hola, yo me llamo Nicolás. Things could be worse, but they are not. Look at the better life. Hola, yo me llamo Eva. My pronouns are she here. And one has to make peace with himself. Then peace can be made with the world. Hola, yo me llamo Katrina. And my pronouns are she her. And learn about people different than me. Hola, me llamo Marley, he, him pronouns. The most important talent is the ability to learn. Hola, yo me llamo Addy, my pronouns are she, her, and enjoy people's company. Hola, yo me llamo Sienna, my pronouns are she, her, and find time to do things you enjoy. Hola, yo me llamo Esther, uh, my pronouns are she, her, and take time to smell the flowers. Hola, yo me llamo Lane, my pronouns are he, him, and you must find your own peace before you attempt to make peace with others. Hola, yo me llamo Eben, uh, my pronouns are he, him, and you can try your hardest to fix everything that life throws at you by your lonesome. You'll never have the chance to fully experience it. Only through living for others do you truly live a complete life. Hola, me llamo Mars. My pronouns are they, them, and my message is for everyone to be kind to others and don't judge for people for things they can't control. Hola, yo me llamo William. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and my message is little things matter. Take the time to enjoy them. Uh, hola, yo me Mar llamo Marcos. My pronouns are he, him, and have a wonderful 2022. Uh, hola, yo me llamo Noé, my pronouns are he, him, and my saying is peace, happiness, and joy. I appreciate the 
the uh, heartfelt words and such a such a vibrant um, uh, project that you're doing at McDaniel. I want to have um, let's see. Thank you very much, and I'll I'll get hand it over to Tony. Good evening and greetings from Liverpool International School in Badge City, Egypt. We are honored to be joining you for today's ceremony. On behalf of the students and staff of Liverpool, I say salam alaikum or peace be upon you. Liverpool International School is a brand new school. We currently have schools in grades pro kindergarten through grade eight. Our schools study the international baccalaureate curriculum and the American curriculum. Our school is, is located on the east of Cairo. Our school peacemaker team is made up of four teachers, our school psychologist and our school director. Please allow me to introduce Ms. Maha, Ms. Sarah, Ms. Leha, Ms. Menar, and Ms. Miriam. Our student makers are forming a school peace club. The club will be, will, will be open to all Liverpool students. Let me introduce Farida, Laura, Mariam, Omar, Sharif, and Diora. As we mentioned, our schooling as we mentioned, our school includes the International Baccalaureate Curriculum. The IB Learner Profile supports our peace education efforts with, with these 10 key concepts. At this time, our peace education program has five active components. We will briefly comment on each of the five. Our anti-bullying campaign includes several different projects including group sessions, preparing posters, and other visual displays for our school, and performing student prepared, prepared skits. So, I really need to go to the board before we go process through. Not a thing. People must be able to do the same thing they do. I don't know why you can't even go to the board. Most of the time, this is just going to be a little bit of a business. I said, I don't know why you so do for nonviolence has helped us focus on a daily good character theme. Each day includes an inspirational message, reflection, question, and the journal writing opportunity. Maha is leading group discussions to help students learn, uh, learn to see things from another person's perspective and to accept others. Students have prepared a magazine that appears at our school and is updated each month. We are proud of our Liverpool students for initiating a campaign this year to raise funds to support flood victims from Aswan. We are currently preparing another community service project to provide food and support for poor families during Ramadan this spring. 
We look forward to supporting our peace promotion efforts with placing a peace poll on our school campus. We are currently determine, determining the design and construction of the poll. The four languages will be Arabic, our mother tongue, English, or la our language of instruction, and Spanish and Chinese, two languages taught at our school. Additional plans to support our peace education projects include using our free exhibition of student learning, providing uh, student peacemaker awards, and establishing sister school relationships with schools around the world. We are honored to be included with the other recipients of the Spirit of United Unity Award. As we say in Egypt, inshallah, or good willing, God willing, all the schools will be successful with their peace promotion projects. Shukran, or thank you for including us. So if I might ask uh, the members of our Liverpool Peacemaker team just to come gather around so you can be, everybody come together, and <laughs> be visible. We have our, our students and staff here together this evening. They all stayed late after school. It's uh, going on 7 p.m. They've been here since 7.30 this morning. So a, a long day, but uh, I, I want you to know on a personal level, I'm proud of each and every one of you. All of the others who are supporting our efforts uh, here at Liverpool, we want to thank uh, the Holistic Peace Institute uh, for uh, giving us I wish you I could I wish I could give you each a nice virtual hug. Thank you so much for staying up late and and uh, giving us such a clear idea of what a wonderful program you've initiated there. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for all of you students so very much. Um, and now uh, I'd like to turn it over to you, Gary, and let you uh, give us a background on Declare. Okay, and I want to start by um, just saying to all the students and teachers who participated, um, it's an honor uh, to be here with you all today. You are my heroes because you have taken the time to conduct peace projects and learn about peace, peacemaking in all your different schools and communities. And um, even though you're eight separate, uh, you're really one huge uh, student body, um, because I know you've touched a lot of other students. Um, you're my heroes because your peace projects have stood, you've stood up for your ideals, acted improved a lot of others in your school, and therefore your community, and, uh, and, and hope can build a current which can change the unchangeable. And you must always remember that. Um, the Institute believes that if you students are taught the importance of learning about Nobel Peace Laureates and Peace, importance of doing peace projects of learning skills of conflict resolution and mediation, by learning why uh, studying about human and civil rights, this will help you. You will grow to be adults. You will know how to settle conflicts peacefully through dialogue. You will not choose violence nor will you run away from your tough personal situations as adults. And one of you may be president of the United States or a senator, and uh, your hand may be on the button. And you will know from this, from your, from peace education and leadership studies that you know better than to push that button. Um, unfortunately, some presidents in the world today don't know better. Um, but with that, I, I want to talk a little bit about President T. Clerk. He co-won the Nobel Peace Prize with uh, <clears throat> Nelson Mandela. And uh, in order to understand why, I have to talk a little bit about apartheid. And um, uh, apartheid, um, uh, well, in 1950 in South Africa, they had a Population Registration Act. And it classified all South Africans into one of four racial groups by appearance and ancestry, socioeconomic status, cultural lifestyle. And those four were black, white, colored, and Indian. And so between 1960 and 83, 3.5 million black Africans removed from their homes 
their land was taken away and they were forced into segregated neighborhoods as a result of apartheid legislation and some of the largest mass evictions in modern history. And these were called Bantistans or tribal homeland. So this was the backdrop for President de Klerk as the president of the, I think it was the National Party. So the National Party was the, um, the most conservative party. And President de Klerk, uh, his, um, you know, his father and grandfather were in the government as senators. And, uh, you know, so he grew up in a, a political family, a very conservative political family. Um, but all of a sudden, and I, I asked him that when we brought him here uh, to uh, Oregon, I said, well, why did you change? Why did you just change on apartheid? And he looked at me and he said, I just had a change of heart. I just had a change of heart. And I just knew, uh, almost like waking up one day, uh, that it was wrong. Apartheid was wrong. And uh, so as a result of that, he permitted anti apartheid marches to take place. He legalized the range of previously banned anti-apartheid political parties. He freed all the anti-apartheid activists, such as Nelson Mandela. And uh, he dismantled South Africa's nuclear weapons program. And then uh, President Declerc negotiated with Mandela to fully dismantle apartheid and establish a, universe, a transition to universal suburb. And he also in 1993 publicly apologized for apartheid's harmful effects. Um, and all the legislation was repealed in 1991. He saw the 1994 elections and Nelson Mandela was, was elected president. And then of course they won in 1990, uh, the Nobel Peace Prize together. And, um, so he really transformed South Africa. Uh, South Africa was a pariah on the world stage. Um, uh, you know, the people didn't want to bank with them and there was this growing world movement against South Africa. And with a single stroke, a single change of heart, one man, one man changed overnight. Um, I think there were probably over hundred million people in South Africa. And here, here is some images of uh, de Klerk speaking to a, uh, a middle school in Camby. I think we had 3,000 people there um, to, to, for him to speak. And him and Nelson Mandela the day they won the Nobel Peace Prize. And uh, so he, it shows you what one, one human being can do if they're placed in the right place. And uh, who knows why, President DeClerc had a change of heart, but he did have a change of heart. And he's a good model and this peacemaking and peace education is critical, absolutely critical to the development of uh, students and of a full human adult. And we just wanna encourage that. And we, we really thank the, the uh, Harold and Arlene Schnitzer Care Foundation and Jordan Schnitzer for continuing to fund this work. This is our 13th year. And also um, Kathy and Lee Larson, uh, who, and this is probably their 15th or 16th year funding this work. So I, I know Kathy, uh, particularly when she sent our, our check this year said, um, we so much admire your work with schools to teach young people from an early age all the ways we can utilize peaceful ways to solve issues and spread ideas into the world. So we feel grateful to our funders. We feel grateful to our students and teachers. And um, I wish you a nice day. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Nancy. Take Thank it away. you so much, Gary. I appreciate it. And I know we are um, now at the nine o'clock hour. Um, each of you that has participated today um, 
is going to continue on the work. I have so many diverse uh, projects and programs that are going on all in the name of peace. I want to encourage you and just congratulate you in the deepest way um, to continue to communicate with us and to spread the word to others. Um, we have applications open for next year's Spirit of Unity. We encourage you to apply, share it with others. The link is here and I will send you, all of you educators, a copy of this uh, PowerPoint and really feel that there is no real peace without justice and consent. That's what our declaric has said. And there's still a struggle throughout the world, but there always is a way toward peace. If you speak, as many of you did today, so many ways that you spoke from the heart and you thought about it and you realized every individual, every individual is a child of peace in this world. And that's what we want with each other. Thanks for joining us and um, we'll hopefully we can have another session in the future and not too distant future uh, where we can continue to, to share resources. And, uh, Nancy, could I mention, uh, is there a way we can send to everybody, everybody's email? So if they want to follow up and, and uh, email and connect with each other, they can do that? Yeah, sure. Why don't we do that? We'll do a group distribution uh, for the winners this year and some contact information for each person. And like I say, the, the uh, website and the Facebook uh, contact for our organization too. So we can share, share concerns, questions, right. practices. And, and, you know, in doing that, you know, kind of informally, you know, we've all heard of sister city sister city program, different cities kind of connect with each other. This is the beginning of a sister school program by yeah. sharing, everybody's sharing. 